recorded. I'm, I'm now calling the Tuesday, November 9th, 2021 special meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District Board of Commissioners Standing Budget Subcommittee to order. The time is 7.06 p.m. At the September 21st, 2021 commission meeting, commissioners volunteered and were appointed by a vote of the commission to be members of a standing budget subcommittee. The subcommittee now needs to decide which of you should conduct this meeting and thereby serve as chair of tonight's meeting. Subcommittee members, anyone want to volunteer or suggest a selection of chair? Joan, would you like to do it? If not, I'm happy to have you do it as I'm doing another, another subcommittee. I'm not, George is so busy, I don't even wanna put his name up for it unless he's itching to do it. You're the um, yeah, so I, I'm happy to do it. But I'm happy to have you do it, Joan, if you'd like to do it as well, because I've been part of the budget subcommittee for the past two or three years. So entirely, it doesn't matter to me. Um, Thanks for that, Roger. I think first time around, I'm going to let someone else take the spot. Okay. Happy to, happy to assist and, and, and maybe take on more when I can. Okay. Okay. Chair Spreen, please proceed. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. Please note that in support of physical distancing during the pub local public health emergency, this meeting is being held remotely in pursuant to government code section 54953E. Because we are video conferencing, we will follow a strict protocol for the benefit of the recording. I will indicate when commissioners, staff, and the public will provide comments. If you have called into the meeting and are not using a webcam, please state your name prior to providing your comment for the benefit of the recording. Please practice considerate video conferencing etiquette by muting your line when you are not speaking and limiting distractive behavior on camera. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct the roll call. Okay. Commissioner Sherlock. Oh, John, you're muted. Present. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Spring. Here. Commissioner Tyson. Here. Okay, and three commissioners are present, which is a quorum for the Standing Budget Subcommittee. And for the benefit of the recording, I'm also going to conduct consultants and staff roll call. Strategic Planning Consultant Scott. Here. General Manager Logan. Here. Lead Deputy County Counsel Chaladin. Here. Okay. And the consultants and staff are accounted for. Great, thank you. We will now move on to item two, public comment. Persons, let's see, let's see. Should I still read this despite having the members of the public present? I'm happy to, but. I don't think so. Okay, in that case we will, uh, I will consider item two, public comment closed as there's no members of the public here to comment. Uh, let's see, we'll now move on to item three, discussion of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District draft budget for fiscal year 2022 to 2023. General Manager Logan and financial consultant Vargas, please introduce the item. Um, I will just say a few words and just thank you for your presence and your participation in the subcommittee. It's very important. We're starting early with um, very uh, tentative numbers. So this is really a great opportunity for you as commissioners as a subcommittee to um, help us align the budget as you aspire for it to be and then move it to the full commission uh, on November 16th and onward. And Corey will explain all the timelines. So thank you for uh, allowing me these comments. Thank you, Jay. So um, I'm going to go into share screen, provided I can figure out where am I? There we go. And I think for tonight's meeting, um, can everybody see okay? Yep. Am I? Okay. Sorry, or you probably want to go to full screen. Okay. Um, the little icon at the bottom. Presentation mode, I meant. Presentation, Presentation mode. Presentation mode. Let me get to that. Go to the bottom right. The bottom. <laughs> um, I'm new to this. Bottom right, first icon. There you go. Button. That little yeah. thing right there. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, no, no, sorry. No. That, you wrong there. that one. Wrong right. This one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to now, how do I? There you go. As you can see, I don't share screens often. I'm, I'm usually just being the clerk. Um, so you know, just a quick introduction of, of the budget process. Um, you know, our mission, I think you're all familiar with that, protecting the lives, property, environment, and community. Um, our three pillars, the CWPP, our uh, successor strategic plan, 
And then, of course, uh, the third is what we are going to be talking about tonight, the budget. Um, and all of these uh, um, three pillars is are built upon these three pillars is our forward looking community resilience chart, which uh, Jay and Sarah actually uh, uh, updated uh, today. So right before the meeting and, and you were all emailed that. And Jay, I don't know if you want to uh, briefly talk about that or. I'll come back to it, Corey, just go ahead and then sure. I'll, I'll pull it up as, as needed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So tonight's meeting, um, I keep wanting to scroll. So, um, so the budget overview, obviously tonight, uh, you were being presented with, as Jay said, very, uh, the very rudiments of, of the uh, fiscal year 2022-23 budget. Um, and um, we've accumulated that strong fund balance. Uh, it's past five years and projected to do the same for this current year. So that's six years total of, uh, of padding our fund balance. Um, and of course, as you know, we, we're um, expanding our integrated hazardous fuel reduction programs. <clears throat> we're collaborating with uh, regional agencies to strengthen the um, a IHFR and uh, community resiliency. And uh, we've been increasing our personnel and consulting resources, GIS, uh, the video videographer services, um, Marcy, who's, who's with us right now for, uh, you know, uh, uh, strategic plan and, and MRG also is doing our records retention. So, um, you know, we've really been getting a lot done this last year and I we're, want to continue to, to keep that momentum and expand. Um, now, I've presented the balance sheet here. I just want to go over real quick. Can you see my little cursor when I scroll or no? Yes. <laughs> yes. You can. Okay. Yes. You see me like moving your pictures around too? That's embarrassing. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, our capital <clears throat> assets, which are right here, um, what had happened when we did the 2022 budget, we had thought that um, we were going to be adding all of the uh, hydrant infrastructure, which was never recorded as a capital asset. But what happened is after I talked with the auditor, he said, well, no, you, you expensed it in the year that, that you purchased it. So it wasn't capitalized. So um, I had planned to increase that number, but it did not end up happening. So instead what we've uh, reprojected, we're gonna be getting that lovely masticator. We're gonna be getting a grass mower and we're gonna be getting a trailer all before uh, fiscal year 22 ends on June 30th. Um, and that's estimated to be about 250,000 uh, less accumulated depreciation uh, for 23. Um, again, it, it goes up a little bit because we're hoping that that masticator is a huge success. Um, and so I've kind of budgeted for the possibility of purchasing another remote control masticator. So <coughs> can, I inter can we yeah. interrupt during? The sure. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I'm Back on the topic of the hydrants, does that say that the hydrants really don't show up on our balance sheet at all? They are, the, the, it's the infrastructure. So what happened is when, you know, years ago, when uh, these things were recorded in, onto our uh, balance sheet, we were only told how much the hydrant cost. We were not, we didn't take into account all of the valves, the infrastructure, everything that's underneath. So what happened is that just ended up being expensed. Now, the county does not track any of our assets. Mm -hmm. So um, us tracking the assets is kind of an internal thing that we do. Um, so as far as for the financial audit was concerned, you know, I was saying, ooh, let's add it. I want to show it on our balance sheet. The um, auditor said, you know what, it's, it's going to be a huge hassle. It's not worth it. You know, it, 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 the, per the county, um, it's doesn't matter whether you capitalize or expense it because they're not tracking your assets. So just leave it as it is. Okay. Um, yeah. So, hmm. and I, I made sure that um, it didn't affect our insurance. You know, I didn't want our insurance provider to look at our balance sheet and go, wait a second, you say you got, you know, 5 million, yeah. but here it says you only have 1 million. It, it's no effect whatsoever on that. So it's just more and it's an off balance. It's an off book item. It's an off balance for. balance sheet. Yeah, and that it's just it's so many years past that. Okay. Yeah, it it. Um, I think. Okay. We're, yeah, we're. Yeah, I'm just curious to, to, behind that. So uh, yeah, good yeah. To know that that's one of our major assets, but it's not going to be in the financial pages. It's, it's not. Be... Yeah, it's not okay. going to show properly um, as to what our capital assets actually are. Um, I think at this point, probably 
<clears throat> the ones that we're tracking the most because the hydrants have been depreciating. It's it's the uh, fire station. Fire station cell. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's all. I'm just yeah, curious. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> and okay, so we covered. Um, anyway, balance sheet is standard. Um, you know, we have these funds that we committed way back in uh, mm -hmm. 2021. Again, county doesn't doesn't track our committed funds uh, for them. Everything is the unassigned fund balance. Um, and again, this is just kind of a internal uh, tracking that we do mm -hmm. to show our intent of what we would like to spend things on. And I think Chris is is currently still researching um, whether we can uh, whether the the Board of Commissioners is the, the top authority to decision-making authority to mm -hmm. recommit those funds. But in the meantime, we're just keeping what we have and we're not gonna uh, focus on that until we get a determination. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that an accurate statement, Chris? <laughs> for purposes of a public hearing for me to, uh, to give legal advice, I think, that's is, okay. update, I think that's as much update as I can give right at this moment. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll be back on that topic very soon. To be determined. Okay. <laughs> so I would just say that on this topic, and I'm certainly a proponent of this uh, direction, really for Joan's benefit, just a little history that this was was the same way we did for the town of Los Altos Hills. We looked at our, instead of people always talking about, there's that fund balance you have, you know, it was a way, our way of telling the public that, look, this is not just a, a, a piggy bank. There are things that we're going to have in the future that we need to prepare for, be it for emergency operations, be it for building replacement, and we should be. This is kind of early planning for where these this fund would go, and so we try to bring that concept also into the fire district as well to remind people that we're going to have improvements to the and rehab on the fire station is going to be required. So we don't want people to think that that money is just sitting there; that there really is going to be a future need for it. And this is really a notate a way of notating that whether it's legal from our financial records point of view is, is another question for Corey and Chris to figure out, but that was the, the purpose of this was really to denote our future direction of where these funds should, will have a potential purpose. That's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, let me move on to the next slide. Okay, so revenues, I don't have much to talk about revenues right now because um, County provides that to us, the Office of Budget Analysis, and that I will not have until early December um, and as far as the, uh, our interest, um, the last quarterly re investment report I received from county is from June, so I kind of want to wait until I get the most recent one from September, which should be coming uh, within the next week or so, um, so then I'll be able to get more accurate figures. So I just did quick, quick, very, very rough estimates of what I think, but this is in no, it, it's probably going to be more. Um, so just keep that in mind that, um, you know, we, we're, we don't know what money we're working with right now, but um, I, I'm thinking chances are this is a pretty fair guess as to what we can expect to have as far as then what uh, expenses we can, what, what we can spend this year. So me, now we're going to start going with spending. So our operating expenditures, um, I think, uh, Pretty obvious the insurance uh, premiums, those are going to be raising. It's just insurance rates have gone up due to COVID. Um, we, for workers' comp, we have um, a new employee that we'll get to when we get down to salaries and, and uh, employment position. Um, I've done an increase to maintenance structure and grounds. Um, so, Dave Barnett, um, our integrated hazardous fuel reduction. Uh, consultant, soon to be operations manager, provided me with a, a spreadsheet of, of um, projects and, and uh, things that, that you know, cost estimates and projects that he'd like to see during the fiscal year. And one of the, the um, ones he would like to do is to get that uh, district lot that we have, that empty lot, get something going there. Um, so kind of still in the early stages of that, I figure fiscal year 23, it might just be some fencing, some paving, I don't know, not not big expenditures like tra uh, trailers or temporary buildings yet. Um, but you'll see when we get down to uh, outside services, we uh, have 
budgeted more for the design phase of all of that. Um, so in the actual fiscal year 23, I don't think there'll be much construction. That would be for 24. Um, everything else, I don't know if there's anything really big. Oh, the, uh, the property tax admin fee and the cost allocation plan, which actually I just got today. Um, so cost allocation plan for the year is actually gonna be 39,000. So look, we just saved ourselves about, <laughs> about 27,000 there. I, I had estimated 67 and it's 39 something. Um, so again, I'll, I'll have to update these numbers when I get them from County. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions about operations. I think it's pretty straightforward, nothing new really going on there. Um, I just noticed the, uh, the increase in the publications and legal notices. Does this have to do with things like our outreach for things like the, the, the shaded fuel break? So this, um, the publications and legal notices are gonna be things um, like the, really what I'm thinking is more like RFPs um, when we have to make the legal notices. Oh. Um, Cause I know during fiscal year 23, we're gonna be doing, uh, we have to get a new auditor. Um, we're gonna have the, uh, the planned uh, uh, evacuation route hardening um, this is going to be, you know, it's like commissioner vacancy ads. It's, it's the, the publications that we have, the, the outreach and all of that, that's set down under projects and programs where we have, um, I can't remember the name of it. The, <laughs> what is that to count? Uh, communications and outreach. So we have that down in projects and programs. I see it to for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, I've got and, it on my other screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any, any other questions, Joan? You're good. <laughs> I assume. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> salaries and payrolls. This is um, the, I guess, going to be the first sort of thing that we want to delve into. Um, there was suggestion that perhaps we should have an administration manager, somebody that can assist uh, Jay. This would be a full-time position. And uh, this person is going to help with administrative and, and district operations. So uh, we heard that the management audit reports, those are going to be going on for another year. Um, our strategic plan ends fiscal year 22. We're going to have you know, a, a new fiscal year 23 on uh, strategic plan, uh, getting agendas together, getting contracts, resolutions, agreements together um, would really help, I think, take a load off <laughs> of Jay's work. So um, that was um, suggested by Roger, actually. Um, and so I just wanted to see sort of what uh, George and, and Joan, what you think about uh, if you have any any feedback, <clears throat> feedback or, or other suggestions, we'd love to hear it. But uh, all, all other positions yeah. are staying the same. Yeah. yeah, let me let me give a little more on that. Yeah, yeah, that, go ahead. <laughs> um, as we talk more about stuff to come, uh, in my early feedback to Corey, you know. And I'm not trying to get ahead of us. A lot of our bottleneck is on, on the number of hands we have to get things done, the number of agreements we've got, and it's a growing number of administrative tasks just to keep all of these balls in the air, let alone uh, meetings like this and, and dealing with uh, you know, the county and the, the and there's so many administrative tasks that Jay has pulled into, let alone all the meetings and so forth. Um, it, it's kind of like uh, having you know, Dave is kind of one half of her. There's another half that's missing, which is all the administrative side of things. So um, it really is someone who has experience at doing these things and can interface with the county and Chris and others at a, at a credible level and really take some of the load off Jay because right now she's kind of indispensable at those tasks and you never want to have an indispensable person. Um, so we want to have her deal with more strategic items and other ways for us to actually grow the district and use some of these funds we have. Right now, she's more than full-time being done on a lot of administrative tasks, which I'd like to see someone else doing. That, that was where this came from. Um, I thought that, you know, we're looking, we're talking about 18 months out from now in terms of budgeting. I thought, gee, over the next 18 months, there's gotta be room for another person to come in and really help with those tasks. So that's why I felt like someone, a slot was needed for that kind of thing. And for the number here is that, including all benefits, everything all together, or is that just salary? This is just salary. Um, we don't have benefits, um, so there is no. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything else that would be covered? In that? So no, yeah, so, 
So there's no, no health insurance, no, no pension. Um, so it's, yeah, this is just the flat rate salary. And how was this number arrived at? This was, we based it upon, uh, it would be sort of an equal position to Dave Barnett. Um, so it would be equal compensation, equal skill set, just a di or different kind of skill set, but equal. <laughs> Yeah. Equal level, basically. Equal level, thank you, yeah. I, I can respond to that a bit, Joan. Uh, what it really is based on is an hourly salary uh, that is about $85 an hour, which uh, for a person with an experience level, and then it's 2,080 hours per year is full time. So it's just a simple math um, coming out about 180,000. And that's commensurate with what the operations manager and the emergency services manager, they're right in that salary range. To go under that, I don't think it would be competitive at all because there's no, I mean, if you're going to hire someone at an at administrative level, there's no sick leave or no, there's no benefits as far as um, um, any of that or, or retirement. So we have a very limited pool that we can draw from with no other kind of benefits to the employee. Gotcha. Thanks. Sure. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're rel still relatively new in this whole having employees thing. And, and so I think it's a fair question. So, so in general, I'm, I'm in, in support of making sure that we have the resources so that all these programs can actually happen on a schedule. And, and I think that there's a sense of urgency. I think we all wanna push forward. Uh, I don't have any particular sense for what the salary level and all should be. I think we should be open to looking at if we're able to attract the people, what it takes for us to attract the kind of caliber of person we want here. And if it turns out that we need to have uh, uh, additional benefits or something to make that work for the kinds of person, then I think we should be open to that. Um, and, and having said that, then this could just be a placeholder for a total spend that we could work from. I didn't quite catch the 18 month thing because it looks like this would start in six months. Oh, right. What I mean was we're basically talking about, you know, the end of this budget is going to cover to the end of July 2023, which is, you know, a little more than 18 months from now. So okay. you know, this is uh, this is an important page because it's really and maybe we want to spend more time on it. This says how big our staff would be at well, actually uh, 19 months from now. Yeah. Um, and we're really only adding, you know, in st strategically. An administration manager. Um, so that's why I'm saying it, this is that's a lot of time and, and a lot of projects that are going to happen in the next 18 months minimum. And this is where we would what we would end up with staff wise. Uh -huh. And I think what we're going to see is, and again, I'm kind of getting ahead, but one of our limiting factors in taking on more projects, because my first comment, by the way, when I saw you know the whole budget was I went through hearing how where can we spend more and do more with our residents' money for our residents? And we are limited in what we can do for our residents by the number of people who can administer all these projects and handle all the administration that goes with them. Um, and you kind of have to do that hand in hand. You can't just grow one side or the other. Um, and I'm just thinking 18 months out, is this the right size for us in terms of growth? And I, and I also certainly... So maybe there are other staff positions that need to happen. We may not be aware of them, what is most needed yet. Um, but that's why I think this is an important page for us to really understand. And George, I think your comments about whether we are an can make attractive offers is a good one. I don't have any answers to it. And it's a very uh, a whole important discussion to have. But I think it's, a, you know, sorry to be too wordy here. One of the key things about discussing this budget overall is this is really a chance for us to say strategically, where do we see this organization being 18 months from now? And, you know, this is an important one. I mean, only two years ago, we had zero people in these. Um, and now we're seeing an explosion of things happening, which is great. Um, and we are still completely dependent on the people in these slots right now. And are these the right slots? You know, how, what can we predict 18 months out? That's what this is really saying. Yeah. Well, I think if you look at the strategic plan and you look where we're trying to grow, is this the key area that you think should be supported? Was that how it was arrived at? Really, um, I think what was arrived at was this is essentially what we have today. And my one comment was, 
I see a log jam at Jay's level where we've got more than one person's job being done by one person. Um, and, you know, how we, we and, and you, know, you can't grow instantly and we, we couldn't grow instantly. So we couldn't just add a whole lot of rows. Um, you know, we need to know where you want these things to go. And I think that as Dave has come on board, we now have a very good, you know, we're getting a, a much more fleshed out structure with both strategic views uh, and tactical views with, with Denise and Dave and, and with the variety of, of analysts and part-time folks that are working with Jay to really handle a lot of the, the detail work. I think it works very well. That is gonna limit, you know, but that is the limit of what we can accomplish is with those people. Um, you know, we are not, by the way, this, this budget will go beyond the period that our current strategic plan covers. That's another thing for us to discuss here. So the question is, what is the next set of growth, if any, this organization should take on? Um, you know, what's our next level that we're trying to get to? And I'm, I'm not making a statement of what I think that is. I don't know, because I'm not someone, you know, I like to go lean on things. Um, but I, I, right now I've got a lot of projects going on that I don't think are gonna go away. And I wanna make sure we have the right amount. I don't want anyone getting burned out getting those done. Mm -hmm. Could, um, could I suggest that maybe Marcy could add a few comments because Marcy is looking at the total organization as a whole, has a very interesting perspective as a consultant that works with many agencies. And Marcy, you know, not not to have you interject here, but if you have any comments, it would be helpful, maybe. Sure. Really, um, at the core of it is we're talking about expanding programs, um, and as Dave has come into the organization and really been reaching out to some of the regional partners and relationships he has and in working with Denise and Victoria and all the staff, you know, we, we have been working on this strategic fuel break and then what projects we can do in support of that, you know, in certain boundary areas, um, looking at vegetation reduction, um, the hardening of the evacuation routes, and looking at how we grow all those programs. And the challenge is always gonna come down to, we don't have the workers to do that work. So um, we're thinking about how are we going to be able to get this work done? And what comes along with those projects is all of the support. For example, the event that Vic, uh, Victoria hosted at Town Hall right before Halloween, you know, was a, a really wonderful outreach event and it was a ton of work for her. Um, so just thinking about that, that we do need to support these programs and um, understanding that the county is still gonna demand ongoing reports for the next year. Um, and we also are in the middle of these two studies, the countywide study and the LAFCO study, which are very critical probably to what the district's going to look like um, at the end of this next budget. Um, so for, for all of those factors, I think um, we're going to have to be creative about how we can support um, our own staff and then how we can support and get these programs done. You know, just to, if I chime in. Um, to a certain extent, the, the budgeting process is one where you sort of lay out where you think things might go and you, you create, as I said before, placeholders to say, I've got the option for that. And then to a certain extent, any, any careful management would involve redefining a job description and, uh, and, a, and a, a, uh, a pool of applicants. And sometimes you find you need the flexibility to be able to change based on who's available and and all that, uh, and I would just say I, I'm hearing a lot of strong support for this as a, as a concept, and I'm not disagreeing with that. And I'm just I'm looking at how does this look from the outside about sort of this increase in staffing. And and me, I would take your title here, and I would make it program administration manager or uh, something else that makes mm -hmm. it less that sounds of uh, oh here's somebody who's gonna. <laughs> I really agree. Didn't George. answer the yeah. phone. Okay. And, and I realize that's yeah. not what you're thinking at all, but just to make the, the title yeah. more oomphy. I would make it senior program manager. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good salary. And it's, um, you know, I mean, I come from nonprofit and profit world. That's a good salary. Um, yeah. Even, yeah. even in tech, it's not a bad one. So <clears throat> for running programs, even that's pretty good. But yeah, I would definitely I think it's really smart to take administration out. Mm -hmm. 
and keeping it as general and flexible as possible because the needs of the work are going to continue to change. So I think that's a really good point. I'd, I'd like to give some background too. When we went out on the district operations manager, uh, we did sourcing for that position for a year and a half, almost two years, could not find uh, ample candidates. And the dilemma was whether to make it fire centric or make it more, not, let's say program centric or administrative. I weighed in on let's do the operational, which was fire centric. And that's where Dave's skill set fit very well because it's very, very operational. It's very tactical. It's how to get these projects done. Um, and so the candidates that we see were either candidates that had the fire background or they had administration. And when I say administration, I mean uh, directors of agencies, uh, assistant city managers or city managers from agencies were interested at that price point to help. Those are the kind of skill sets that I think would be warranted in this position. But we didn't. I didn't look at those candidates because I really wanted to go the operational directive and that was to look with somebody with, with very high level fire experience because I thought that's what was most important for the agency at this point, pinpoint at, of growth. Now that that's been filled, then it's like, what are the next 19 months? How are we going to use this, this staffing, as is pointed out, not to start the, the, the fiscal year in 2023, but to end it? Because once, once these uh, positions are committed, it's very difficult, if, if not possible, to add on new positions. We can change the title, we can change the, the position description anytime, but we're kind of locked in. So it's gonna be a locked in for about, about 19 months. And you, you've gotta think about your programs, where you want them to go, and is this the staffing that's gonna support it? Right. Thank you. I'm, I'm just thinking when we have to present it on, and I know we shouldn't spend so much time on one line item, but um, when we have to present it externally, as George said, but also, um, even to um, our colleagues, it's been a lot of growth very fast with a lot of people and a lot of additions. And not that it's a bad idea, but I think we just have, a, have to have a really good story for why. And I think it does have to reflect the choices we've made in the strategic plan. Even if this, it goes beyond what we have, you know, the plan we have for now, where is that gonna go that next year? And how is this supporting it directly? And then I think we have a good story. That's all. I do want to, um, while we're talking about employees, uh, mention something uh, Marcy kind of brought up is, you know, Victoria, this last outreach event she had was just very overwhelmed. Um, I think she ended up getting uh, overtime hours. And so another position, I guess you could say that we're uh, considering is, is a temporary seasonal employee position. And this would be uh, people who just come in, you know, $20 an hour, uh, price tag. They come in for a week or so, two weeks to help Victoria uh, do the grunt work, the gopher work, I guess you'd call it. Um, and so that way Victoria can keep her focus on, on the, the cert and not setting up tables and, and you know. Um, so I guess I would like to hear it might too. Be an events yeah. person too. Potentially could be an events person. Could be. No, I think it, yeah. it's, it, it's the same kind of thing. I think we need to look at that event and decide how worthwhile it was mm -hmm. versus piggybacking on other existing events and what the difference was in terms of, you know, how we rate that for success and then decide if we, I mean, she definitely needs help if we keep going at the way, rate we are now, but I think that we might want to look at that. So okay. just want to be cautious. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it, would your recommendation be maybe hold off on the temporary seasonal employee position for now? Or, Keep it as a placeholder. I'd go ahead and present it. I think we go ahead it. and okay. present it. And I think that we just be ready for those questions. For the pushback. Okay. <laughs> what was the success of, of the things she spent her time on besides just CERT? What were the success of those events? Or is it just an events person? Or do we pull back on some of that event stuff? Is it really winning enough? It's, I just think we need the story. Okay. I think the, um, I mean, you're right when you mentioned uh, there has been a lot of growth. And really, I, I think that. Uh, almost as a result of the, you know, last year's you know, audit and threat and getting the whole public involved, you know, since then there's been a lot of presence of the district in people's lives and in all positive ways, you know, with, you know, projects going on in El Monte right now and, and uh, has, you know, getting the, 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 
HIZs and the, the, the change in the way that brush tripping is going, we're, we, we seem to be very omnipresent, which is exactly the way we should be. In ways we were not being, years before, we were very limited by what we could do. And we, were, and we, had a, we could barely spend what we had on the programs we could manage as a seven person team, essentially with well, maybe 10 total county commissioners. Um, we really have come a long way. I think it's something to be celebrated. I think people are still expecting more. You know, one of the reasons why I was, ex was ex really excited about the, the, the strategic fuel break, and I know while we're very dependent on others like Midpen for making that happen, just seeing my neighbor's reaction to that, like, wow, you, you know, something is really being done on an overall townwide basis. Big dollars are being spent to make big changes. I think that's what people want. And my fear, it, I'd rather, people want that. We are constrained by how the budgeting process works and how we kind of get locked in in advance. We can't really add positions. Even though we have the money to spend on it, we're locked in 10 months from now from saying, hey, we need someone else, let's bring them in. We kind of have to, I want to err on, on growth side here. Even if you don't hire somebody, we need to sort of err in that direction because we can't, we can always not hire, we can't add. Um, and that's what makes this process, you know, I, I don't like to work that way. I don't want to say, hey, we're gonna hire all these people. It's, I, we don't do that just for the sake of it. Um, but to give ourselves that option between now and the next 19 months, I feel like we have to lean that way. And I think people want more big things to come. Um, and actually, as we get down into the more of the programs and start thinking, where are the big programs gonna happen? What kind of staff support is it gonna take to do that and continue what we've already started it is what I see. I, I hate to see us, I mean, this is kind of where our, our bottleneck is, um, where we'll always be. And we have to decide, you know, how much gas we want to step on. This is where we have to make sure we that we step on it here to make those things happen. And I, I don't mind spending time on this chart because I think this chart is one of the most important ones because it really does go to the strategy of what we want to do as an organization. It's, so it's fifty enough then. You know, I don't know. Well, we do have. Um, I can go to the. Let me go to the next slide real quick. Um, so this temporary employees, I think we're thinking um, at least from what Jay said, these are just people that are helping out for a couple of weeks at a time, maybe a month max. Um, when I get to the next page, which I will get to here, now you're getting into your uh, professional specialized services and independent contractor consultants, um, and so. The difference being, so outside professional services, that's going to be companies. Um, so yes, Marcy does show up, um, but she is a representative working for MRG. She's not kind of an independent uh, contractor. She works for a company. Um, that would be, you know, Jackson Ricketts. He shows up, but he works for Jackson Ricketts Drones, his company. Uh, Jeff Tarantino works for FNL. Um, so those are their, our outside professional services, people that, um, you know, that, the companies that represent us. Uh, independent contractors, those would be right now, currently, who we, we're paying. We pay Sarah um, and uh, Dave until he transfers to an employee. So this is where we can bring somebody in to prep them for that employee position. They can, we can start them out as an independent contractor. And then uh, as we did with Dave, sort of um, promote them <laughs> to the employee position. So um, now this does cover Sarah who um, has We've asked if she would like to become an employee and, and as, as so far as she's happy with her independent con, uh, contractor position. So if we want to up this thinking, okay, hey, there might be ideas for more employees that we don't want to show the employees yet. We want to just test it, test the waters and see if it works before we, we open up an actual employment position. Interesting. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't know what people's thoughts are on that. Um, I guess I'll just quickly, I'll go over the other things as well. Uh, the audit, um, our, uh, our contract with Ide Bailey is expiring. So I've upped it because we're gonna have to um, renegotiate the contract or find uh, new auditors. 
um, accounting services. That's me as your financial consultant, uh, outside legal fees. That's Mr. Chris Chelladin. Uh, and then outside professional services. So as I said, that that's uh, our videographer, uh, Marcy with MRG. Um, we wanted to add, bump it up because um, the district lot design. Um, so we'll probably have uh, some design services to, to give us ideas of how we can uh, utilize that lot better. Can um, I, oh, I, yeah. Is now the time for me to, to digress on that bit? You can, it, it, I'll, I'll just uh, finish real quick as yeah. to why, why that number is so high as compared to why, why, why there was the jump. Um, we're also gonna be doing uh, CWPP research for Dave. So, okay, now <laughs> go ahead, jump in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, there's several projects in there. This includes, you know, a lot of people, you know, GIS projects, you know, mm -hmm. videography projects, CWPP research, strategic planning coming up. So a lot of projects kind of over the next 19 months. And one I, you know, and an advocate for is um, the district lot. You know, you, Dave started this off kind of mentioning that he wants to do some work there just to sort of maintain that. Um, part of my strategic plan goal is looking at us uh, sustainability, and that includes from an operational point of view. And I'd really like us to start the research of what it would take to utilize that lot for us fully. Um, there are a variety of needs talked about in terms of structure and building. This includes um, things like community, you know, a community and teaching room, uh, storage for equipment that we buy, potentially place for an on-service you know, on crew, um, uh, offices for our staff, because right now that also limits us in the future because we have no place to put anybody. Uh, and it's really hard to attract people when you have no desk to put them anywhere. So really, what can that lot be used for architecturally? How could it be brought to its best use for the district? And because I figure if you don't start looking at that, even have a plan um, over the next almost two years, we'll never do anything there. So I'd like to see us, um, you know, there are plenty of firms here who know how to look at civic needs and how to turn that into architectural uh, preliminary designs. Uh, and I'd like to see that as one of our professional service costs over the next 19 months. Yeah, that's what that is. I just wanted to be able to explain what- Sure, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the, the mm -hmm. thorough explanation. So yeah, so um, I just curious to, to know people that does this, you know, I don't, I, I don't want, if you're looking at that and going, my gosh, why, why did it jump so much? Um, you know, I think it supports uh, the direction that the district wants to go in, in its expansion. So um, I, yeah, I wonder think if need, everyone thinks that that looks good and uh, you can see we it. Detail, we're gonna need to detail out either as a note or something so that people understand it, but there's yeah. a lot of projects going on under there. Exactly. And that's part of because we have to do things that way mm -hmm. given our staff size. Yes. Just my thoughts. Okay. And that's, uh, yeah. So I'll be bringing, you know, uh, this to the uh, commission. Um, well, probably not these exact slides, but I'll, I'll uh, be presenting the A draft budget to the commission next week, a week from today. So um, any revisions that you guys want to see before the full commission is presented with this, I'm, I'm happy to do, but um, I can provide more detail on kind of these uh, accounts that maybe, I don't want to say shocking numbers, but it's just, say, oh, wait a second, why historically, you know, is that suddenly jumping up to, you know, three times the cost of what you actually spent in 21, so. Well, I think you're right to flag that as being a, a, an outlier in terms of scope, and, and I would just yeah. say to the extent that we add a little more flesh to the, the the concept of we have this lot we always had this lot and that we have certain options that we need to have the resources to be able to explore and what we might do with them and, and to just have people be aware of what maybe the top two or three options what what that might mean because i just heard now some ideas i couldn't tell if some of that was equipment staging versus just uh plain office building kind of thing i heard community room and so I think that could use a little more uh, definition. I think I think the word ex exploratory is, is the right word, exploratory. I don't know what should go there. I have no idea. And I've heard lots of different uses for it. 
I don't know if that lot supports one, two, three, or zero of these things. Mm -hmm. But if we don't, so I'd like someone who has those skills to say, here's what you could do with that. What's important to you guys to, to deal with? So exploratory is the right, the right word for it. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm all right with that. Corey, do you prefer not to put the breakdown in the footnotes? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine putting the breakdown. I think that stuff. might just make it simpler. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Not a problem. <laughs> Okay. All right. So uh, that is our little outside consultants. And then we move on to our contract services. Now this is, uh, um, again, I won't know until January what uh, the annual increase is. So um, I think I just did like a, a 4% uh, calculation. Um, and then this is just, yeah. So these are all of our, our fire services. I don't think much has changed. Uh, we're still looking to have station eight. Um, the extra fire season staff, um, you can see I budgeted more uh, for the current fiscal year and then budgeted less for uh, fiscal year 23. I think we didn't, we haven't really used the outside or the extra fire season staff. And, and part of that is, you know, station eight was able to cover some of that during the summer. So I would expect that extra fire season staff is, is lower uh, due to the extra coverage we have for station eight. Um, and and then, let's face it, we've, we've kind of dodged a, a fire bullet here by having our early rainfall and not having so many uh, red flag days. I think that was an extraordinarily mm -hmm. fortunate yeah. uh, summer for us here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the fire protection hand crews, that's, um, Jay, that's working with uh, uh, Santa Clara County Fire. Do you want to explain slightly what that entails? Um, Central Fire has a division uh, under Chief Battalion Chief uh, Matheson, Mike Matheson, and that's dedicated to wildfire resiliency in the county. And uh, part of their program is going to be developing uh, hand crews. We hoped that that would occur this fiscal year and it was off to a pretty good start, but then what happened is COVID and uh, loss of personnel and all. So that didn't really get off the ground. Now it is uh, getting off the ground and it's going to be hand crews, equipment, trucks, and basically Central Fire coming in with their crews and working with their partner agencies such as Los Altos Hills doing vegetation management. And it could be in areas such as burn preserve, could be along our evacuation routes. It could be uh, along the strategic fuel break, all of these areas. And so this is funds set aside, depending upon how well that program uh, um, marshals up this year. And any questions or thoughts? Does that seem like a good plan? Uh, we've had it in the budget before, but we're trying to get it implemented this year. George looks like a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, can, that looks like it makes sense. Yeah, and I think the more we can partner with other agencies, because I do have a sense that there's not a great desire to really bulk up on staff in the district, but to keep the programs going and to keep expectations where the residents, I feel, want them, we're going to have to then leverage off of other staffing. And so other staffing would be central fire. Right. And that comes with a cost that's going to be higher than, than some other kind of staffing. A, a really, uh, the other part of the staffing is, is uh, fire safe council. And you'll see that as we, um, one of the budget items coming up in November at the meeting is going to be with fire safe council and their agreement for 2022. So we're leveraging from other staffing uh, in agencies to the benefit of the district through partnerships. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if it's worth highlighting to say that our work to establish or, re, or staff fire station eight is something that we're, consider, that we're continuing. That's yes. what this looks like. And, and I don't know, uh, Jay, if we have a, if this is a three-year plan or so, it's just very hard to change things without some kind of sense of the duration, but, but whether we're in a position to make a commitment like that, and I think it would be helpful I mean, if, well, we, if we if we could, the agreement was written to be an ongoing uh, agreement. Okay. So it, it does contemplate then rotating into the, the the following year and the following year, unless the parties want to change it. So it was not a one year one time agreement. It was written more of an evergreen kind of agreement. 
Is that what you're referencing? Yes. Station eight? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We would definitely want to do that. I think we it, it was really interesting, you know, as you as you surmise, we were fortunate with the fire season, but we just nailed the, the dates almost dramatically with June 15th to October 30th. And the chief called me and said, I want to stop it. I did the, the, the second of the last week in October because we've got this atmospheric river, which then I understood to be rain coming. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out uh, really not having to go that extra week. So we had already budgeted into November, if need be, had that extra reserve in that agreement. So um, yeah, I think it worked out well. Uh, every year is a new year. Um, it worked out well for Central Fire, worked out well for the district. Um, we'll get the re results back in a debriefing from how it worked out for Palo Alto, because they own the station. They have probably more difficulty getting the crews together to staff a station eight. And so we'll just have to see how that works for them. But did this help them in, in a way that they would think is significant in maintaining their staffing and not having say layoffs or other issues in Palo Alto? I don't think it hit that sweet spot, uh, Commissioner. I think what it did is it stressed their already thin staff to uh, then have to do more work that perhaps they would not have wanted to do. That's just kind of how I surmise it. When you're downsizing and you're losing staff and then you have the illness and, and the comp and all of those, then you, you look around and you go, wait a minute, who's gonna staff station eight who's here? And it, it's, I think it's that added pressure on that workforce. Okay. That was the impression I was getting. Okay, but to the extent that this is not necessarily evergreen, but rolling contract yes. means they yes. could they could do their staffing and planning, you yes. know, in January, knowing right. that it's coming in as a yeah. And a couple of times, Central Fire didn't have to step in and pick up some days for them when they couldn't oh. put the crews together. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. That's great, though. Yeah. So that so what we did is with the partnership we had. The default or the backs the backdrop we were deep enough to where we weren't just solely dependent on that crew on that day showing up or else we didn't have coverage so that's really the design of a good plan and i think you know that's called sustainability i think you know and i can use that as an example for the district the sustainability of the district so we don't get this momentum going and then not know what to do with it to keep it sustained and I think that that, if, if you've been in, in private sector, we all have who've on, who's on this phone, we all know the rigors of private sector, you've got to have sustainability. And I think that's what the three commissioners and certainly I am looking for with the fire district is having a staff that's sustainable. Uh, as we looked at fire station eight and, and we put together a sustainable program. So if Palo Alto crew wasn't available that day, there was a sustainability and a default with central fire coming in and it worked. Thank you. Yeah. Joan, comments? I think that makes sense. Okay. It's a good reason. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the meat, <laughs> the projects and programs. So yeah, yeah here's here's all of all the good stuff that we like to talk about. Um, <clears throat> we continuing our, our uh, chipping. Uh, the, the monthly drop-off that's, uh, you know, to the Foothill College uh, that um, is done through Green Waste. Now, Home Ignition Zone, we bumped that up. And the, the thinking there, this has, I think, kind of been what we had hoped to do since the beginning and just couldn't because COVID sidetracked everything with HIZ. What, we couldn't get to people's homes. But um, we want to implement, I think, a rebate program. And it would be that uh, the homeowner would receive their, uh, you know, their home uh, ignition zone uh, report from uh, uh, <laughs> from Fire Safe Council, and it would have, uh, you know, recommendations of how to uh, create uh, defensible space to keep their home fire safe. And if this involves maybe cutting down a tree that's within the certain distance around the home, we would have some sort of rebate program that the residents could use as an incentive. To um, to get get that work done and make their home fire safe, um, and it would be sort of a placeholder amount of about three thousand uh, dollars that we could do as a rebate per resident. So, um, I, Jay, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add about that. Um, no, I, th I think you 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 uh, portrayed it 
uh, accurately. Uh, about two years ago, uh, Commissioner Tyson, if you recall, Commissioner Spring, I brought to the commission a um, rebate program for HIZ. It never really moved forward because we were just starting to convene management audit. And so we just kind of let things status quo until we got through the management audit, which took a number of months to do. So this is going back and picking up the threads of that program. It's not a replacement for tree removal. Um, it is really brush removal. And um, it, it's a um, rebate for if I've, I've talked with various property owners who, when they do the chipping program, and I say, how much did it cost for you to be able to remove this brush to the side of the road for chipping? It was anywhere from five to $10,000 up. And so the rebate program is to use the HIZ and, and motivate the resident to immediately take action and not just take a HIZ and say, oh, that was nice. And then the paper never gets looked at again and there's no effect from it. So it's, it's very much a standard rebate amongst public ag agencies. You see it in drought, where if you have a drought inspection and you do certain things and you get certain rebates back from that. So it's that same kind of program. It's not unusual. Um, I believe Saratoga has a rebate program for trees. Um, other districts have rebate programs. So it is encouraging and motivating the resident to take action based upon the service of an HIC. Um, so that's what that is about. And I'll just leave it at that unless there's any questions there. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Yeah, um, and Corey, what Corey did is she grouped all the HIHFR programs together. And Corey, when you finish the slide, then I want to move to the to the uh, forward-looking uh, oh, resiliency. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I did that. Um, we we changed the name uh, this this account right here. Um, evacuation route and road hardening last year. It was uh, shaded fuel it's breaks. Break. So yeah, we want we want just to to uh, yeah. use the the correct terminology. Um, but you know, it's it's we're looking to you know we're, we want to continue doing our our uh, road hardening as we're doing with Moody Road right now. Um, open space fuel break program that is for uh, the um, like mid pen uh, projects, all those those things we've been discussing. And this is a new one here, this I-280 fuel break project. This is something that uh, Dave uh, brought as a suggestion. Um, his quote was, in collaboration with Fire Safe Council and with permit through Caltrans, Hazardous fuel reduction will be completed along approximately 5.5 miles on Interstate 280 from Page Mill Road to Permanente Creek. And it's an estimated two year project at a cost of 1.1 million. Um, so I've just divided that by two for the fiscal year 23. And, um, you know, Dave, he's, he's not here today to, to explain more. Jay, I don't know if you can provide more details on that. Uh, no, I think, I think that's good detail. Um, we're going to meet with the ad hoc committee for integrated hazardous fuel reduction. I want an opportunity for those commissioners to hear about it and then it'll be reported fully at the commission meeting on November 16th. Well, I think that's me again too. And, and I gotta say, I drive that road all the time and it, it chaps my hide to <laughs> see how disheveled the darn place looks. And I know how Caltrans is. Uh, and so if we can find a way to get really the work they should be doing done for all of our benefits, um, then I'm all for it. And uh, I'll just point out the, the challenge we have, uh, again, sometimes the crazy thing, especially in the public sector, the challenge we have spending money. You know, you look at these line items, the HIZs and the evacuation routes, that's uh, Fire Safe Council, um, the strategic fuel break, that's mid pin. We're, we don't do that work. We depend on them to do the work and they have their own processes. Um, we experienced with FSC, a lot of staff turnover. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the staffing really is, is the challenge. Um, but I think we're getting good traction in being able to move forward, um, with all of these various different programs and um, specifically with the HIZs, uh, there's been some effort to go out and look for more providers and it's very difficult. We did find a private sector provider that are kind of like off duty fire folks, um, but they all got deployed. Um, so when, when we were having all the big fires, 
-hmm. So anyways, that's an ongoing challenge and we're trying to be creative. I, I think sometimes I think our goat grazers are our most dependable um, <laughs> workers. <laughs> Yeah. You know, Jay, uh, the, uh, Council Member Lisa Schmidt had an, an effort along these lines, and, and can you can you just tell me has that sort of stalled? Well, that's uh, pretty much what Marcy alluded to. Yeah. As as it turned out, the work crew were uh, off duty firefighters, and so the time they had set aside to come out and work with the town was right then the fire started and they just all disappeared. We didn't hear, I don't think um, council member Schmidt heard much back from them, but they, it, it no longer was a viable uh, project yeah. and they were not a viable company. And I would say what we're doing for an estimated $500 an HIZ, they would charge $2,000 an HIZ. Mm -hmm. So it's a poor for-profit company versus a nonprofit company like Fire Safe Council that does everything they can to keep costs at a minimum and also provide, I just think, outstanding service and expertise that there's no parallel to. I'm just very impressed with what the service they can provide and the expertise behind it. Great. Yeah. Marcy, any comments on that? I think you were, no. Okay. Uh, nothing more, thank you. Thank you. Joan, you had some comments? Nope, it makes sense. Okay. Okay, so moving on, we talked about goats. There's our goats. Uh, we're looking to increase it slightly. And that's the hope that, hey, we, maybe we can get the goats somewhere else besides just uh, burn preserve. So yeah, I think that's uh, really smart. planning for another location, uh, you know, to be and again, you know, I, I wanna say that's where we stalled last year. We needed to do that, or this year. We needed to do that this year, did not have the staff time to do it. Could not take it on. So. I'm finding being thwarted at a number of, of junctures in the road where we know as a staff what that next step or what that next expansion needs to be. And we just, in fact, we have a little motto amongst us, no new ideas, okay? Stop it, no new ideas. Because it just catapults into, okay, we can do this and we can do that. And then it's like, stop, no new ideas. Go back and deliver what you've said. And it's it's a little little bit of mirth, but it's, it's dead serious. And it's the kind of thing that well, I shouldn't say dead serious. It's very serious, but it keeps me up at night thinking, oh, we should have just done more at Burn Preserve. We should have brought the goats in and had them there longer. But it to do that and to work with, with all of the logistics, Parisima, the town, um, the, the goat vendor who's got more requests than he can even imagine facilitating, it, it takes a lot of time to I guess program manage that. I won't say administer it. Program manage it. <laughs> Direct, perhaps. That's yeah. strong. <laughs> okay. Next, uh, next we have those uh, emergency cert arc supplies um, that keeps trending upwards because Victoria has just been doing a stellar, fantastic job. So um, I, I, I will. I will tell you. I've, I've got to interrupt you because. Yeah. I'm getting glib now. I, I, it must be that I need a sugar high or something. Oh. <laughs> but where I just had to drop my jaw is when Victoria calls me and says, Jay, I've run out of storage space, but I've got this great plan. I said, what is it? It's storing materials for the ARC underneath El Monte Station. I said, stop it. You can't be doing that. That's a flat area. We are just so out of storage. We just are so out of so many things that... And she was serious and probably she's going to do it just because all of my nose just didn't make any headway. Um, so when I look at the art supplies, I'm thinking, okay, how many of them are in plastic boxes underneath the um, El Monte in, in this, in the space, in the, in the crawl space down there. But those are the kinds of things that we're facing when we try to accelerate and expand our programs. Thank you. Sounds like a good list for you to keep running on there. Jay. <laughs> One of the stories, you know, maybe and we can have it. Around it. Around this <laughs> okay, next we have a new account. Yay, new accounts. Uh, this is vegetation and response equipment and maintenance. And this would be so obviously for maintenance, repair and maintenance of the masticator and the, the mowing, um, but also allows for uh, purchase. We Certainly we would like to have uh, something for, for Dave to use, uh, some sort of vehicle that has um, a towing, uh, radio communication, emergency response capabilities. Um, 
well, not just Dave, but any any staff, but he, he's the, the most fit for it at the moment right now. So so this is, and then of course the maintenance of that gasoline, all that, all that fun stuff. So um, that's my thoughts on this one. Uh, the hydrant repair maintenance additions. This is um, again, just ensuring that our hydrants and the uh, infrastructure beneath are up to par. Um, and then I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory neighborhood evacuation drills, firewise, uh, you know, the, the uh, temporary refuge area, that's something that we budgeted for in the current fiscal year. And I think there's just kind of been a delay in getting that. <laughs> Staffing. So again, yeah, every, everything's delayed, you know, so. Staffing, uh, staffing so, issue. Yeah, yeah. So what, once that staffing issue is resolved, uh, we're off and running with that. Um, communications and outreach, uh, that's uh, George, you were talking about earlier. So that's going to be all of our mailers and uh, publications and flyers and, and just uh, focusing on, uh, you know, uh, communication, I don't want to say ad, <laughs> work, you know, I was about the word I'm like, I'm like the advertisements, but you know, no, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> reaching out to our public. Yeah. Totally. And then emergency access roads. We have, yeah, I budget for this every year. And I think it's kind of always just kind of falls to the wayside because it's something that, yeah. again, we don't have staff. Yeah. And so I'm sure that our emergency access fire roads are in, in grave need of some attention. So, um, yeah, that's something we would like to, once we have more staffing, focus on that because uh, it's been ignored. And then of course, um, as with all the programs, we have the contingency. Um, this is sort of the padding um, that, so say that the HIZ rebate program is fantastically popular and we wanna be able to to provide more rebates so we can borrow from, from point A and, and cover point B or the chipping program suddenly takes off when we go to year round chipping for all the residents and suddenly everybody wants more. Um, and you'll notice I, that's in blue for all sort of the main groupings. Um, there's a contingency that allows for extra spending. So I think that gets us through uh, Corey, could you put up the oh, four thing you're yes. right now, and I'll yeah. just uh, just take a few minutes just to go through it because this is the, this the chart is a good summary mm -hmm. of what we've just talked about. Yeah, that's forward looking. Okay, so this is the um, revised this month forward looking resiliency chart, and um, what it does at the the top banner is it talks about the, the chart. Let me get the chart on my screen so I can see. Oh, where it. is it? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> for some reason, it's, there we go. Thank you. Hi. Okay, so the chart in the center of the top banner talks about it's built on fire science, the CWP PNX4, and it's guided by the strategic plan. So this chart wraps up all of the three pillars of the district. On the right side, there is the interactive link because this is an interactive page. It's a single page, but if you have it on a desktop, now it becomes a book that can take you or a travel log that can take you to all of these different links. Over on the, the left, the, le the legend has some definition there. So I just wanna start with that the chart is run by the Los Altos Hills Board of Commissioners. And then to the right, that segment, and this is where the management audit really has helped us define our programs. Because what this does is it lays out our programs for integrated hazardous fuel reduction in such a way that meets the requirements and the comments and wisdom behind the management audit recommendations. So if you'll notice on the far right, those are, those are community programs. On the, on the left of that right are the resident programs. Now, if you look at the budget balance between what it costs to run those resident programs, the top half is HIZ brush chipping and then the monthly drop-off. The bottom is what the resident can do for themselves. So that's what I call self-help or actualization that by these links, it takes the resident to what they need to be doing. They're building their own resiliency. That's what management audit wanted to see. Help to the resident, but not doing it for the resident or not becoming a 
part of what the resident's responsibility was. Over on the right right, you've got the community programs. This is where now the meat of your budget is going. It's, pay, it's the Page Mill Road evacuation that was done a year or so ago. It's the current right now Moody Road. Moody Road became the hallmark in the closing remarks from management audit. And it said, this is exactly what we wanted the district to do. And it called out Moody Road. Well, my goodness, if they tell me what the win is, I wanna do that you know, quadruple. So we went from, so in the budget, we're proposing going from one El Monte evacuation to four, one, one a quarter for the new fiscal year. So we wanna capitalize on that. And then you'll see the other ones, um, the 280 vegetation management, that's similar to a Moody Road, only it's on a freeway. Um, weed abatement, the goats, the fuel breaks in open space, and fire protection hand crews and the Firewise community. So what we've done, and George, you were on board from the very beginning of this, you saw us now shifting funds out of the residential, the tree program mainly, into then a community benefit in the highest targeted areas that benefits the most of the residents. That's what management audit said. Mm -hmm. uh, George, does that ring true for you? As yeah, I it definitely sounds very familiar. <laughs> it surely does. Okay, now if you switch over to the left-hand side, let's take a look at what those uh, parameters are. This is your fire protection and prevention programs. So the three things that I always say, the district uh, defines itself by prevention, protection, and building resiliency. Your building resiliency is on the right, and now your prevention and protection is these components on the left. And you'll see each one reads down staffing resources. Uh, that is the station eight, the battalion chief, the upgraded equipment, the district parcel, and high fire season staffing. So that's the strand there. Then the water systems is really interesting because this is an important change I wanted to mention to you. We know that goal three as it is, I think Marcy, no goal four on hydrants is to take care of our hydrants to repair, maintain and manage. But then also another part of that goal I think is very important is improvement to district owned hydrant water systems. And we're still pursuing how to do that. How do we improve what we own in that water system. One of the ways is every time Parisima does a water main improvement, we jump in and say, okay, we'll place where our hydrants are going to be relocated and we'll add some. That to me is key right into that box of improvement to our existing water system. And then moving on, we have evacuation, zone haven, we have public alert system, then we have community outreach and education. This is the heart and soul of what Victoria and Denise do. And then we have emergency road access that kind of lingers over there looking for a staffing to help perk up that program. Um, then we have a bar that drops down that says potential future programs. And uh, we had four in that box. We did three of them and we have early detection. We're still looking into that. I've looked into a number of, uh, along with Dave, along with a um, couple of commissioners, we just, I can't find anything sound that I would want to bring to the commission on that level yet. Now, supporting all of this, okay, great programs, good budget, um, good planning, but what does it take infrastructurally to do it? That's what this bottom tier is. And that is all the programs that report through the general manager. This is where you get your operations, your GIS, your CERT analysis, finance, legal, risk management, emergency services manager, district clerk, PIO, and consultants. That's a heap of work. We've got a, just a couple of people that are doing it, but it takes all of this infrastructure down at the bottom, the platform, as I say, to support all of this good thinking and good programs that we have budget to, to um, implement up in the primary area. So that's a quick review of a forward-looking community resiliency chart. Comments, very ha happy to have your comments on that. Joan, can I start with you? What do you think? Beautifully organized. I think that you know you addressed all the the points of concern, showing that what we are providing, as well as how we do it and how it is resident based. Although I really miss the tree program, um, I like that one a lot. The um, yeah, it's it's perfectly presented. Okay, okay, and I think it's a snapshot of the budget. I mean, all that we just went through for the last is, hour yeah. and, and twenty minutes is right there. Mm -hmm. George, comments, thoughts? Uh, the only thing is, I'm, I'm just having trouble seeing 
where's our basic uh, central fire contract here? Ah. I see station eight, but I don't see. There's no, there, yeah, there's no suppression. Just, I don't see the oomph here. Yeah, I'll read there. <laughs> which, is, which is really where our, a lot of our budget is. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we left that out because that's the suppression and emergency medical service. Uh, this is the prevention and, and resiliency charts. Um, do you want that in there? Well, I don't know. See, when I read it, I thought protection meant meant the response to emergencies. Okay. All right. Well, I can drop that in. As so well. you don't. You, you can either do that or just have. You've got a little room there in the center left to just say, um, kind of as a floating, um, oh. a floating category. Yeah, but you're right because by leaving that out, I've left out a big divot in the budget. So thank you for for finding that. See, that's what happens when you get two into your versions, you stop seeing them anymore. So thank you for guiding me through that. all the details. Yeah. Should be clear with that. But it's, it's, a, it's a nice chart and I like the graphics. And it's all hyperlinked. Mm -hmm. So if a person's using this, it's on our website, all they have to do is click on any of these hyperlinks and it goes to our website page that has a volume of information that they can read. He's trying it. Okay, Roger, any comments there? Uh, similar to George, I, mean, I think this is a, you know, I see how this is kind of evolved from some of the previous diagrams you've done. And I really like it as a way for residents to understand what is the district. I think mm -hmm. the I don't like the title, forward looking community resiliency. I don't, I think that's confusing and uh, in a way meaningless. You know, I know, it's, I recognize it's not, but I think someone from an outsider reading that's not going to know what that means. What is that? Right. And I like that, uh, as George says, you know, having the box that shows that our contracts for fire suppression is another key pillar. Mm -hmm. This is everything we do. I think, I think it's wonderfully organized that way. So it really is a, you know, if someone asks, what do you guys do? This would be the chart if that mm -hmm. were also there as well. So it's more than just forward looking community resiliency. It's really what we do. Okay. So could I have a contest? Who can come up with a better title? Can we call it mission yeah, okay. statement? Don't, don't take my criticism alone, but that's my. Uh, so yeah. who came up with the title was your board president? Uh, oh. Maybe something future oh. thing. Future well, play, play on Mark. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We can take this on in the marketing meeting tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, okay. Sounds good, John. Yeah. You know, I, I think also I'd love to take this and give it to an agency to simplify visually. So okay. you can use it a lot and we can use it also on the website. So it's just really easy to see okay. what somebody wants to go for. It's so much info. I think that they could probably um, rework it so it's a little easier to read. But beautiful job for what it is. Not to submit. Okay, good. Okay, thank you for taking a few minutes for that. Okay, Corey, onward and upward. Okay, yeah, I, and I think we're we're towards the tail end. Where did my little PowerPoint go? Where are you, PowerPoint? Well, next steps, I think. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm trying to to share. It doesn't want to share with me. Uh, let's see, hold on. I have to stop sharing and then go back, maybe. Yeah. There we go. Back to your PowerPoint. There we go. Okay, so yeah, next steps. Um, so we are going to uh, take uh, this budget that we've just discussed tonight. And um, I just want to re-look over my notes. I think we had suggested change for the administration manager. We'd like to call it the, uh, the senior program manager. So uh, that'll be <coughs> the only change that we had to anything. Um, well, I'll add notes about uh, sort of uh, things that might stand out. I don't want to say red flags, but uh, you know the uh, accounts yeah. that had big changes from prior year, and we will bring that back to the full commission in one week. Yeah. Uh, and let me let me interrupt here. Yeah. it doesn't really fit your slides. I'm, I'm, I apologize for interrupting. Because yeah. the one other comment that I had, I realized the way we came to the slides, there's one element missing from the way I read the budget originally and had a reaction. Because I love George and Jones sense of which is you know if you look at you know the like, granted we're still early we don't know the full revenues or anything else but this budget shows essentially another year of profit uh of, of uh, not spending everything 
Um, but I see we've, we've reduced it over the past week or so. So it's, yeah. I guess it's down to about $76,000. Uh, 76,363 is the, the net change. Yeah. 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 And so you see a lot of these things. So that's where my, you know, earlier in the week, that number was larger. Mm -hmm. uh, and my sense was, you know, how do we, and, and as someone who, who, I don't think this way, but how do we spend more money? That's mm -hmm. always been my question here is how do we really generate more things and use that, these taxpayer dollars and, uh, I just wanted to emphasize that that really was a key thing for me to be looking at. And then the question becomes, where are our bottlenecks? You know, I think even the budget here, I don't believe we're going to be able to spend as much as we're budgeting in all these programs. We don't know how it's going to shake out and which ones are going to be problematic, which ones are not. But uh, this is, is aggressive trying to spend as much as we've been budgeting here. And we're still going to be increasing our fund balance, let alone the fact that we've been looking for years of how do we spend down this fund balance? Um, this is not like the town where I think where we want to be continuing, you know, we like having a big savings account. We like to be really utilizing these things. Um, you know, love your thoughts on, you know, that money sitting there is, um, helps define us as an organization to others. Um, some of the reasons why I'm interested, frankly, in also moving forward on exploring what can we do with a parcel, something that can really increase what we can do for the community that, you know, that uses some of the assets that we built up from the community from taking them their, through their taxes. So I just want to point that out. I think that I expect this will be a, a subject of discussion in the full commission. And certainly if, if members, I thought there'd be more members of the public here, at least one person yeah, discuss this. Exactly. <laughs> um, and they're gonna look at that and say, you know, what are you gonna do about all this money that's building up? You know, uh, Roger uh, spoke up before I, before I could because I, oh. I, I had the same reaction and that was, this looks like a an, an very solid incremental budget that gets us to roughly parity in terms of spending. However, in the past, you can see from previous years, we often have had unexpected large surpluses. I would expect that could continue, especially when I see some conservatism there. I mean, in what Corey showed of property tax revenues. And, you know, I can't help the fact that people are knocking down perfectly good houses and building big yeah. expensive ones and increasing the property. I can't help that. And, and it's but, not our fault. But, you know, let me, let me say for our purposes here today of a one year kind of budget, I think this is okay to leave it as this, but I, I do feel like it, it should be our our vision to say, let's develop a, a three-year plan to reduce our reserves by $10 million or something. I'm just making up the numbers. And, and how could we possibly, what things would be suitable from using taxpayer money in our district that could accomplish that? So I think you might want to redo the way you say that rather than saying, how do we spend this down? Do you say like, how do we supplement the programs to optimize use of okay. the <laughs> right. right. How do we how do we invest in our community to right. improve exactly. uh, fire fire safety? Exactly. Right. Very good. <laughs> uh, so I think because I had the same feeling too, and it's like it's such an embarrassment of riches, right? And it is. What um, and and I think and to your point about you know having pe people run more people there to run the programs, Jay. I'm not saying that's a bad idea because I think it's a brilliant idea and it does need to happen. But again, I come back to the plan. And so George, the fact that you brought up the three-year plan, and we go back and we look at the strategic plan. What are the areas where we really feel the growth has to happen? Then it all relates back to our plan. Or how do we expand that plan so that we're taking that into account? And then we develop the programs that satisfy the plan, right? Yep. So that's I just. I think we're doing a little bit backwards and that's a better way to be so it is. Can, can i make a comment on that i was on the lafco meeting today i don't know if any of the rest of you were but the lafco study the main lesson learned or the main concept coming out of it right now is the most important thing a community can do for and i hope i'm not overstating it but that's what was said the most important thing a community can do for fire resiliency and fire protection is guess what? Evacuation, route, hardening. It's exactly what was said. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to come out. Was anybody on that, that call 
today. Okay. Um, that was that that is a great very... social media headline. Hmm? For what, uh, that's a great social media headline. I think that we should talk about that tomorrow. Yeah. And then, then the, the speaker went into the paradise situation where, and we have Commissioner Kearney who was at Paradise and was a part of that rescue operation and showed us the graphic videos that, or, or photos that he took there. And we all know that Paradise was the most prepared for evacuation route and for, um, had even drilled it and was the most devastated by it not working. So um, if there's anything that I was, uh, that I took home after that, meeting this morning at 10 o'clock was we're on the right track as far as increasing our evacuation route hardening. So mm -hmm. I think, Joan, when you're looking for what is that we can do that does the most, it's that. I will tell you, it is so labor intensive. Mm -hmm. but we went through on Moody Road. Yeah. George, you know, you and Lisa were out there <laughs> yeah. um, working with the residents who off my property, I don't want you around here. We're to an outsider, it looks like we're doing the resident a favor. To the resident, it's like, don't invade my property in my space. Mm -hmm. It's completely a contradiction to what people think should be being said that's not being said. So that just says to me, we need so much more education and outreach and example, example, and practice and practice. Uh, so the resident starts changing their behavior and buying in and wanting that assistance. Two, two comments. There's, uh, a lot to, there's a lot to discuss on that one, but I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> Joan, you were there too. Okay. Two related yeah. comments. Uh, I agree with, I think, George and Joan, both of what you're putting together is that we need a, an ongoing larger plan for yeah. where, how we're going to deal with this surplus. And actually, we have uh, a strategic plan to figure out during this budget. Um, so the result of the end of, you know, 2022, 2023, and maybe we should, we have to schedule really by the end of next year, we need to have a new strategic plan. And I would say that would be the focus of it is, you know, we have sort of a two year short term one. We're in a very different position than we were at the start of it. You know, that's what that effort's gonna, should be looking at. And that's gonna, that's gonna come up, be upon us very soon. So I, I totally agree. That's the, what the focus of that should be. How do we really move to another level to uh, invest, I like that word, George, uh, be able to make a sizable investment in this community with what we've built up. Um, on, a very, on a much more minor comment, one of the things I think we had expected we would be spending a huge amount of money on, but some capital assets was, I just wanna point out that um, this, the fire station upgrades have kind of come to a halt. That was something we meant we were intending to be doing, and I realized we didn't talk about this in our discussion tonight. Um, I thought you guys should hear as well that, you know, remember the guy was coming in and talking about what we could do, rearranging it and everything else, make it more you know, up to date. Those efforts have kind of stalled and are kind of indefinitely stalled from what I've seen, just because the Central Fire is just busy with a lot of other things. It's no one's, no one's fault, but uh, it's kind of a shame that that's one of our capital assets that takes capital money and we can't really spend dollars on it when we want to, so. Mm. Okay, that's it, but uh, so, so our strategic plan, I like getting this going now early that, that we should be thinking that next year's strategic plan needs to be thinking about mm -hmm. next level investment. Yeah, absolutely. And I do think then to any of the areas that we want to supplement, um, especially for employees, um, if we have it in the plan where that growth is supposed to happen, then you have a real solid story for when you're queried. And the optics for um, the public is great as well. So. Mm -hmm. so anyway, I, I apologize for interrupting, Corey. I just wanted to make sure we oh, finished no, no. that. That's we'll fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Full next yeah. Steps. Not a problem, yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, yeah, this is just, yeah, we're closing it out. Um, we're gonna bring this back in November. I'm hoping that the uh, commission will want to have a meeting in December where we can again sort of focus with all seven members uh, and I'll have more information. You know, as, as we get, that's the problem is starting so early is that um, I really only have billings from July for a lot of the vendors, July through September. I don't have October billings yet. Uh, so I, don't, I only have four months of data to be working with um, 
when we get into December and then of course by the January meeting, hopefully I have half a year of data, which will give me a, a much better idea of, of what our reprojected fiscal year 22 figures will be, which helps me then to project right. for 2023. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we, we really wanna hammer this budget in uh, and, and then have full commission uh, Support, uh, support with that. Um, so it is the January 18th, 2022 meeting uh, where we sort of uh, decide to finalize the budget, submit to OBA because their uh, deadline is February 12th, which is before our February 15th meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Now OBA has been generous in the past that if there are little subsequent changes after January 18th, um, that they will allow us to revise the budget because the county exec does not review until February 22nd to 25th. And our budget is very simple compared to a lot of many other county departments. So um, they, that's why they've been so generous to allow us sometimes, oh, so, wait, 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 can we change this real quick? <laughs> so um, the board of commissioners adopts the final budget at the April meeting. Um, and then the county of Santa Clara uh, finalizes their recommended budget April 22nd, so right after that. Um, then they have their budget workshops in May. And finally, the Board of Supervisors have the budget hearings in June. So that is the next steps on that. And I think that is the end of the report. So. I have a couple, I just yeah, yeah. Right, closing a comment mm -hmm. that might be helpful for the committee to know. And that is, you know, we were going to make a major investment in a water tender. And that's also been held. Um, the company that they're handmade, the company that makes those uh, items during COVID had to release their staff, close down their factory. And then in, in reopening it, it didn't work out where they were. They may have given up their lease. I don't know, but they moved out of state to another state, just started production again. As a result, we're down pretty far in the queue for a water tender. And to my knowledge, it's not been ordered yet, and I don't have any anticipation. It takes about a year for it to be built as to when we're going to get it delivered. So here's another example of a fairly large investment and order <clears throat> that's not coming through. I'm also concerned about the masticators with supply chain problems. If we order today, we're not sure when we're going to even take receipt of it. So those are all the kinds of things that kind of get in the way of the spending and, and the, the, the tools that we need to um, make some big strides for the district. Thank you. Great, thank you both. Um, any more <clears throat> comment among the commissioners on these items? No, no I, I have, sorry, go ahead, George. Please, please yeah. don't. Okay, unrelated. Um, I was just thinking, because people were pinging me from work while we were working tonight. And um, the company I work for now does a lot of data modeling. And um, they do free programs for like nonprofits or, you know, or certain groups that need that kind of thing. And I didn't know if we need more modeling for some of our activities or other things that go on with fires in our community. But I just wanted to put it there in your ear. Um, but something like that might be a possibility in the future. So we do predictive analytics and you know you can really see by by maybe the programs that we run what kind of results we expect by some of the modeling. So just came to me from out okay. there. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the the, the grid here? Mm -hmm. Seeing no public members here, I'm not going to ask for public comment. I see no one has no one has come since then. So in that case, um, with no other comments, I will move to item four adjournment. Hearing mm -hmm. nothing, this concludes the November 9th, 2021 special meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District Board of Commissioners Standing Budget Subcommittee. The meeting is adjourned at 8.40 p.m. District Clerk Vargas, please stop the recording. Mm -hmm.